I chose to present Chopin at this year's American Psychiatric Association annual meeting. The reason though, I think what really vital about Chopin is he winds up being a wonderful example of the capacity to transform emotional suffering and medical illness and use that as sources of creative inspiration. He had phobias, panic attacks. He also had complex visual hallucinations, which suggest the possibility of the diagnosis of temporal lobe epilepsy. I think it's actually probably not a coincidence that this man who was deathly ill for much of his short life, a man who hallucinated images of phantoms, he wound up composing the most famous funeral march in history. Chopin lived his entire adult life as a refugee. He grew up in Warsaw, but Poland, there was an uprising. He was forced to move to France. He was desperately homesick throughout his life. It was during his lifetime, Poland had been obliterated politically and militarily. He was convinced that if the world could hear distinctly Polish music composed by a world-class artist, it would remember Poland. So well, he suffered tremendously because he was separated from his family and friends, but he had a higher calling. The first program um, that I did at the APA, one of these musical sessions, I believe was in 1998. So I've been doing them more or less annually since then. There are several reasons why I do it. One of them is that there seems to be some epidemiologic data which suggests that the incidence of psychiatric illness in populations of artists, in poets, writers, painters, musicians, is greater than in the general population. Many of the greatest composers have been floridly mentally ill. Schumann, for instance, classic case of bipolar disorder, but he composed prior to the year of effective psychopharmacology. You're Tchaikovsky, who was chronically suicidally depressed. Last year I presented the case of Sergei Rachmaninoff, who had severe writer's block and wound up dedicating his second piano concerto to his psychiatrist. So there's a lot of mental illness in populations of artists. This is something that I'm looking to bring out. But I think another important point that I'm trying to make, because there's a complex relationship, it's really important not to over-romanticize mental illness. Because most people that we see, most people who are depressed, they're just too paralyzed to write a symphony. Most people who are psychotic, for instance, are too disorganized to write a coherent novel. And we as psychiatrists have an extremely vital role in helping individuals who are grappling with problems without interfering with the creative process. It's an extremely complex relationship and I think a very important one to attempt to elucidate or at least attempt to explore.